Welcome to Touchline. I'm your host, Anthony Totera, coming to you from the Soccer Hall of Fame and all the way from Scotland, Ontario-born player, Fraser Aird. Fraser, welcome to OSA TV Touchline. We welcome you here, young man, and we thank you for taking time out of your life to join us here. Fraser, let's talk a little bit about your history. You were born here in Ontario. You started playing at the age of three. Tell us a little bit about some of the clubs you started playing for. Uh, I started at West Rouge with my older brother Cameron Aird, uh, playing two years above. And then I eventually went to Pickering with my older brother and then went down a year to a year above me. And then I went, finished my playing days in Canada with Markham at my own age. Very good. Now, there's got to be some memories playing in Ontario, Fraser. I understand that you uh, were a scoring machine about three or four years in a row. You scored a ton of goals, and I'm sure that Dad must have gone empty in his pockets paying you for all those goals <laughs> you scored, eh, Fraser? Tell a little bit about uh, those days of scoring a ton of those goals. I, uh, I was always a, a good player finishing in front of the net. That was one of my strong points in my game, attacking game, scoring goals and stuff like that. But uh, just... When I was younger, I just always had that goal thread in me, and it's carried it's carried with me since since then, and stayed with me now. What did you enjoy working on, Fraser? When you were a young boy, that you want to tell the young boys out there, what did you enjoy working on when you were alone? Maybe in the backyard, maybe at the schoolyard. Was it a free kick? Was it maybe the penalty shots? What did you really enjoy working on that no one had to push you? It was uh, really me and my brother. My dad would always send us out, go play some football, go play f some football. Since my brother was a goalie, we just went up to the park, kicked the ball around for a bit. I used to put my brother in net and just hit shots at him all day long, as hard as I could, as hard as I could. He just said, keep hitting them, keep hitting them. <laughs> and that's just how I practiced and that's learned That's a perfect match. I mean, my your trade. brother was a goalie, you're a striker. Hey, that's a perfect. perfect. Right now, let's hope you took care of your brother because you've <laughs> gone on to success and he took a lot of your shots. Let's talk a little bit about that success. I've known for about a year now, I've been hot on your tracks to get you on here. You've gone to Scotland and you're now playing for Glasgow Rangers. And what a dream that is. You started in 2011 and presently still there. Talk about getting there, the first feelings, the first emotions of getting there. The first day I went on trial is a bit weird knowing that growing up supporting the club, all the history behind the club, my dad telling me about the club when I was younger, the whole family supporting the club. The first time I went there, put on a blue strip, it was, it was like a dream come true. That's that, awesome. That's what it was. Now you mentioned the word jobs. Explain a little bit about that. You gotta do your jobs. What is it, chores around where you're staying at? Tell the, the viewers out there what that no, means. No, each, each player has a job at Murray Park, the club. And like some players, they gotta clean the kit room. Some mm. players are on staff coaching boots, gotta clean the boots and stuff like that. Just clean up around the whole facility and stuff like that so it's ready to go and stuff like that. Oh, I love that. I've never heard of that. That's awesome because that puts in discipline, that puts in a respect for what you're trying to do as a young man. And that is something that is very important to let the young boys and young girls uh, know out there uh, what you gotta do on a daily basis. That's fantastic. Now, Fraser, uh, let's let's go back a bit here. I, I know growing up in Ontario and in this great country of Canada of ours, uh, unfortunately, many players, not just yourself, but many players fall through the cracks. You had your opportunity here at Ontario. You had your opportunity, which really bothers me even more, at the Canadian Soccer Association level. And unfortunately, there was coaches out there that really didn't realize your talent. I know Fraser is a parent of two boys. When the door gets shut on one of my two boys' faces, I tell them the next time, break through that door. Work harder and harder to show those coaches the mistakes they made. You are doing that. You're playing in Scotland, and you've played for the under-20 or under-17, if I'm not mistaken, on the Scotland team. And that is a success story. What do you want to say to the people out there about this situation? Just keeping my options open, to be honest, I was... I went away with the under 15s. We were in California um, for a week, a week and a half, I think, training camp. We played against the United States twice. It's a good in experience and stuff like that, but I don't think the coaches really seen me as the player I was and what I could do and stuff like that coming through the provincial ranks here and stuff like that, being the captain for Ontario for three years and showing the coaches in Ontario what I was made of and what, I, what kind of player I was. But when I went to Canada, I didn't really get the chance to show what I could do and all my abilities and stuff like that on the ball and off the ball. But just, I went over to Scotland and in about two, three weeks, the Scotland coaches were at our games because there's a lot of boys at Rangers in the Scotland setup and with the SFA and stuff like that. And they noticed them right away playing with Rangers. So they came by and just gave me a call and asked me to come out and try out 
and uh, we went with, with Scotland and I did well. I, I came on in two games and I started one game and I scored one goal when I came on. So I did really well with Scotland and stuff like that. But I just don't think when I was away with Canada that I got my chance and opportunity to show the coaches what I was made of. And this bothers me as a Canadian soccer supporter. I love Canada. Again, we talk about players here in this country that don't want to wear the red jersey and represent their country of Canada. And then you get a young man like this that is dying at that point to represent his country and he fell through the cracks for whatever reason. This country, we're blessed with a lot of players. You're playing with Luca Gasparato uh, on your team, and he has gone through the system here. How important is it, Fraser, to have a, a, a guy, a local guy here with you on the same club so that you guys can hang out after practices and games? How important is that? Oh, it's really good. Me and Luca have played against each other since under seven, under eight. We've always been... Uh, I wouldn't say really close friends, but we always knew each other, playing against each other. Maybe didn't like each other back in the day, but me, <laughs> right now me and Luca are really close, staying at the same house with each other and stuff like that. So it's always good knowing that when, oh, I want to go into town, I could always take Luca too because we're close and stuff like that. You don't always have to just go by yourself. So it's really good in that sense. And playing with Luca, you always know he's a good player because I've played with him since I've since. Uh, we are under seven, under eight and stuff like that in three years at the provincial level. So I know Luca's a really good player and that's really good to know too. You mentioned the word playing with good players, Fraser, and you've played with a lot of players here in Ontario when you were growing up. In your opinion, in your mind, going to Scotland, watching the young Scottish players growing up and playing uh, at the level they're at and what you've seen and what you've experienced here in Ontario, do you think our boys, a lot of them, can compete with some of the kids in Scotland, in England, in Ireland, you name it? I definitely, a lot of boys could go over there and if they have a good couple of weeks on trial and stuff like that, I think they could really shine and, and do well over there. It's just, I find over there, it means a lot more to the boys. Definitely, like it's, it's, that, it's that, that's what they want to do. They want to be a professional footballer. Over here, other guys are playing two, three different sports and stuff like that and football's maybe not the, their main sport. So if, if boys really want to do it and that's what they want to do, they got to focus, train hard when they're young in Canada and stuff like that, and hopefully maybe one day go over to Europe and get a chance, go on a trial with a club and see what happens. Now let me ask you this, Fraser. I know a lot of young men in years past that have gone to Italy to try and make it in City A or City B, that when they see a young Canadian kid coming over there, they go at them extra hard and they go physically hard because they're taking away food off their table or possibly a big time contract. How did you experience that when they saw you coming from here, Ontario, where, or Canada, as they say, they think that all we do is play hockey here, and that's a bunch of rubbish, and we'll talk about that another time. How did they come at you when they knew you were a kid from Canada? Extra harder? Uh, you could say that. Like in training, maybe sometimes they won't pass the ball to you, but it's just you can't, you can't stay in a shell and hide from that and just sulk saying, oh, they're not passing me the ball. You've got to stand up. Keep yelling for the ball, keep asking for it. Let the coaches know that you're here to play ball. That's that's what you gotta do. You can't shy. If someone's gonna come in hard at you, just you gotta give them a wee trick or two and get away or something. Or if they're going in hard, you go in twice as hard. Well that's, just, that's what you gotta do. Well said, well said. Now, a little birdie told me, an ex-coach of yours, Dino, do you know Camarosa? Yeah, Dino. You know. That you're deadly with the ball when you get close to the 18-yard box. But the thing that he did tell me is that you're calm. You're, you're, you're understanding what you need to do, that you're not rushing it, you're not uh, 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 making a decision that is gonna cost your team. And he hasn't seen that in many young men like yourself over the years. What did you attribute that to? Just, I'd say going back to the back garden or going to the park with my brother and stuff like that, always in front of goal, scoring goals when I was a wee guy and stuff like that. But just, I think I've always had that in me, to be honest, I might get it from my dad, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Fraser, moving forward right now, what are your plans? Are your aspirations maybe one day to play for the senior team of Glasgow Rangers or possibly maybe looking in other countries, uh, England, Italy, Spain? Tell the viewers. Ah, for sure. Uh, two or three of the boys last year that were playing in the under-19s with me, Barry Mackay, the likes of Robbie Crawford and stuff like that, they got their chance to play first team last year. And those are boys that I've been training with all year round and playing with week in, week out and stuff like that. So next year they've changed it to an under 20 league. So hopefully the first team coaches around watching the games and stuff, st stuff like that. And hopefully do a couple good things and maybe get the chance to get offered to go around and train with the first team and stuff like that. And then just try to impress from there. Just hopefully get my chance and then take it with both hands. We're gonna wrap it up with the final question. The question that I've been meaning to wanting to ask you for the longest time. 
And, and, and I don't think a lot of people understand how delicate and important this is for our country. Guys like you, Fraser, that really went through the cracks, as you explained, for Canada and, and in Ontario. Even though we're here at the OSA Centre, it must be told that he fell through the cracks here as well. If Stephen Hart picks up the phone to call Fraser Air, and he wants Fraser Air to play against Cuba upcoming or Panama, what will your answer be? Uh, I'd say I'd just keep my options open. If that comes about, then we'll have to deal with it then. But I'm not saying yes or no right now. It's just got to wait and see what happens and how the season goes and stuff like that. But I'm keeping all my options open. That is the answer I didn't want to hear. And it's guys like Fraser that I want representing Canada and wanting to leave it all out there for the country I love. Stephen Hart, Tony Fonseca, give him a call. Victor Montaliani, president. This guy here could be playing for Scotland. We don't need that. Fraser Air, thanks for joining us here on OSA TV Touchline. Good luck with Glasgow Thank Rangers. You very much. And don't forget where you came from, young man. Don't forget. Thanks for joining Thank us you. here on Touchline.